Hi, Professor Baldwin here. Today we're covering the section that is titled Union and Intersection of Sets. But realistically, we're going to be concentrating on inequalities and their intervals. All real numbers can be located on a real number line. Here we have the number A and the number B. We can say that A is less than B or use the inequality notation here, A is less than B, if A lies to the left of B on that number line. You could also say that B is greater than A. Below you have a summary of inequality symbols and their meanings. Notice that we also have A is equal to B, A is not equal to B, and A is approximately equal to B as well as this compound inequality, which puts x between two numbers, a and b. Let's look at two examples where we're going to write the statements as inequalities. In example one, we're told the age a to get into a certain movie is at least 18 years old. Well, we have two key pieces of information, our variable a and the number 18. Now we need to determine which inequality symbol to use. Well, at least. Can this individual that is 18 go to the movie? Yes, so we know that being equal to 18 is possible. Now we need to know, do you have to be older than or greater than 18, or can you be less than 18? Well, if you have to be at least 18, you can be 18, 19, 20, etc. You need to be older. So here it's a greater than or equal to. So the age has to be greater than or equal to 18. In example two, we're told the cost C to have dinner at Jack's Cafe is at most $25. Our two key pieces of information are the variable C and $25. Then we're told at most. Well, at most tells us it can be equal to $25 because we could spend $25 at Jack's Cafe, but at most 25. So we can't spend more than 25. It needs to be less than or equal to $25 for the cost of dinner. Now, be careful with some of these real world examples when you get into those application problems. Pay attention to what's happening. If you put this on a number line, you see 25 is here and you're shading everything to the left of 25 and to the left goes towards negative infinity. We could pick a value here that say negative five. Is it possible to go to a diner and pay negative $5? It's not. So in the real world, your cost would have to be less than or equal to 25, but at the same time, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. You're restricted by that real world situation, right? You can't spend less than $0 someplace. So keep those in mind when you start doing these application problems. Now, inequalities can also be written in set builder notation. Remember, set builder notation is with these braces. It starts with the variable that we're talking about, has that vertical line that represents such that, and then it tells you the restrictions on that variable. So this one is read x such that, x is an even number between 0 and 10. In this next example, we need to write the interval notation and the set builder notation for each given graph. Our first graph, notice that it's shaded to the left, so it's headed towards negative infinity. That means, in interval notation, we go from negative infinity to negative 2.93. Now you need to contain these numbers with parentheses or brackets. Infinity and negative infinity can never be reached, so those are always parentheses. And then your other values, you'll know based on what's on the graph. 
or what kind of inequality you have. Here, this is strictly less than, so it's a parenthesis as denoted on the number line. Now let's write this in set builder notation. We'll use the variable x. So we have x such that x has to be what? x has to be less than negative 2.93. And then we close the braces. Now look at example number two. We're told that our value is between two and eight. So two and eight is our interval. But again, we need to contain it. The two has parentheses because it's not included, and the eight has a bracket because it is included. We write this in set builder notation. Again, we'll use x as our variable. So x such that, and we're gonna say that x is greater than two, but it's less than or equal to eight. Remember, when you have brackets, that's when you have that equal sign with your inequality. The top half of this next page gives you a quick refresher of the possibilities. The first column, you have the set builder notation. The next, you have that verbal interpretation, so what you would see in writing. The third column is how it looks graphically, and notice the difference between parentheses and brackets throughout. And then the very last column shows you how that situation looks on interval notation. Let's look at an example. Here we're asked to graph the given set and then write the corresponding interval notation. We're given set builder notation saying that x such that four is less than x. Well, this might make more sense if we saw it x such that x is greater than four, right? Four less than x is the same as x greater than four. Let's put that on a number line. So we have the number four here and if it's greater than four, we shade everything to the right of four towards positive infinity. It's strictly greater than, not greater than or equal to, so we have parentheses at four. There we have the graph, and this graph, look, it spits out that interval notation. It tells us we go from four to positive infinity. And we have parentheses at four, and we know infinity and negative infinity are always parentheses as well. One more example. Notice here we have the same intervals, zero to five and negative infinity, or sorry, negative one through infinity. And we're looking at the union, that's this U, and the intersection, this upside down U. And we're going to write the answers for each of them in interval notation. So first, we're gonna do a number line. And I'm gonna put both of these intervals on a number line using different colors. So zero to five will be in red. Our key numbers are negative one, zero, and five. The interval from zero to five is shaded here between zero and five. We have a bracket at zero and parentheses at five. Let's do the second interval, which is negative one through infinity. A bracket at negative one and we shade all the way to infinity. Okay, this first example is a union. That's what this U means, union. And the union is an or. So if you replace this U with the word or, and you replace the intervals with colors, it's asking when is it red or blue? Well, when is this graph red or blue? 
Well, let's put that same set of numbers on here. And when do we have red or blue? Well, at negative one, we have blue, and then we have red and blue, and then we have blue. So everything that got shaded is part of this or, or this union. That's the interval from negative one through infinity. But in situation two, we have the intersection, which is this upside down U, and that is an and. So it's asking, when do you have red and blue? Well, what happens when you mix red and blue together? You get purple, right? So we want to look at this graph of our number line, and I want to know when is it red and blue? Which chunk would be purple? Well, it's going to be purple between 0 and 5. And notice that we have a bracket at 0, and we have a parenthesis at 5. So our interval here is from 0 to 5. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure you check out some of my other math videos.